Good evening, everybody. This is week two of the Admin Cup group stage. This is the Ninja Shirt group, and we have Dr. Cossack facing off against Scythe Marshall. I'm often joined here in the booth by Black Eyes. Black Eyes, how are you doing tonight? Uh, good. How are you? <clears throat> um, I'm holding up pretty well. Uh, we have Harumph here helping us out with the restream and Flamery Knight taking care of tracking as a uh, we look over some of the objectives that we've got here tonight. I see a modest amount of moon, uh, a, a non-zero amount of moon, so that's good. Yeah, it looks like we've got a few key items we're going to need tonight. Let's see, need to go up Zot, so we're going to have to find the party rock. Maybe we'll get a peek at the treasury while we're in there. Yeah, definitely if we get it pretty early, uh, that's that's pretty strong value. But if it shows up very late, uh, you know, we got enough other things yeah. to worry about. We got music to worry about. We get to do music. Music is one of the objectives. Smile. Uh, <laughs> music is always great. <laughs> Lovely time. Uh, and yeah, outs outside of that, you know, this this being the uh, the the tough quest set uh, that is that has been set up. We're seeing a lot of, uh, of the same objectives run over run, but a lot of these are very high completion setups and tonight is no exception. Uh, now looking at Scythe Marshall's naming conventions, not a clue. Don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Those are definitely some unique naming conventions. Yeah, I assume, I assume there is a theme. We're going to have to ask about the theme. Uh, but I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know where to take this. Uh, I do well, know we've got that. A oh, start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can, we can take it there. We're starting with, uh, with the Dragoon. So we're starting off with a fair bit of physical attack. Uh, but he is going to be kind of gear dependent and, you know, see Neki. So, eh, we'll, we'll see how well that actually pans out. And we'll see who, get, who he gets paired with as our run should be starting in just a moment or two. Yeah, depending on who the who his partner is starting out, may get to see a fairly early Evelyn dive just to try to spike some of that hopeful gear for him. Yeah, definitely. Uh, now it is it is worth mentioning Scythe Marshall here sitting at three and one so far in this group has gotten a lot of his runs out of the way in this group stage. Doctor Kostek at one and one. Uh, so is fighting for a bit more position here. Uh, Scythe Marshall is sitting pretty high up in the group. Uh, so plenty to play for so far. And we're joined by Iridia here coming out of the Baron Castle to start with a ninja sword or a, a long sword, a sword for a ninja. So yeah, we get to uh, to flip the vanilla script just a little bit, uh, but we really got to be tracking down some more key items, uh, not really getting any direction out of the gate. And so yeah, Dr. Cossack, Scythe Marshall, both heading straight over to visit Bedward. That is one free key item that is available to us, uh, since we don't have that tied to D Mist anymore. Yeah, with the current flag set, we got no boss hunt, so. Always nice to get that free. Oh, and a magma key at that. <laughs> yeah, no hunt for a way underground either. <laughs> uh, I guess that does mean we have another free key item available way down in the Fame Arch. True, this is true. Looks like nobody is interested in the public treasury. Uh, personally, like, I might be interested in going down towards that Fey March uh, with the way loot is distributed here, and it looks like both of our runners will be. Uh, there is just a better chance of that random loot being a little bit better. And that's that's really what you need right now. It's, yes, it's like you were yes. saying about the Eblin dip. Yeah, until you get underground, really, Eblin's probably one of your better spots to loot, but 
we get to start with underground access, we might as well go there and start if we can. Yep, and then of course all of the little bits of information, what two bosses uh, are down in the Fame Arch that you really hope you don't have to worry about. Neither of them will be an objective, but could still hold something. Yeah, as chat mentioned, good chance, better chance for uh, catching a good summon for Rydia to pick up while you're down there, too. Yeah, that is true. She's going to be uh, needing a little bit of time before she has the MP to use those really good summons, but they are out yeah. there. And if you get an, an early Leviathan, an early Bahamut, uh, even early Sylph, uh, those can really make her more viable and uh, kind of help her graduate from Anchor. Our, our job dwarf is an agricultural technician, uh, which is either a very specific job that I don't know about, or is a fancy way of saying a farmer, <laughs> which is his we'll vanilla job. <laughs> <laughs> let's go with the first. Yes, let's be kind <laughs> and, and optimistic. And I, I know nothing about agriculture, so it's, I'm probably being very insulting to agricultural engineers. Oh, hey, an Ogre Thanks. Axe. Yeah. Cossack hitting some of them chests on his way down to the Fade March. See what his next free item is here pretty soon. Yep, did stumble across the Warriors, so we'll not have them come out to play. Far too early in the seed for that. Scythe Sly Marshall's going to join him down there after doing a little bit of shopping down there in Tamra. Yeah, I, I like picking up those Cure 3s when you're looking at this party. You have no idea how long it's going to be until you have a proper healer. Absolutely. Yeah, the Tiara makes for a nice little bit of gear for Rydia as well. And the uh, Darkness Crystal. Okay. We just have access. That is is what we're getting. We're getting the access. The seed is open. <laughs> and hey, there's Leviathan for sale. <laughs> well, Rydia could come online once she gets a few levels in her. Get some mm -hmm. MP built up. We got access to everything pretty much. Wow, well, see where the seed takes us now. Yeah. For, honestly, I just like the comedy of the Feymar shop selling Leviathan. Would you like our <laughs> king? <laughs> right. If you've got the GP, he's all yours. Special one day only. <laughs> no, you're right. The, like the first five minutes of this seed have been very consistent across both of our runners, both doing the same checks. Uh, the deviation has been Scythe Marshall went to Tamra. That's literally it. Uh, mm -hmm. This can be maximum deviation now. Like, so much has, has opened oh. up. Dr. Cossack did grab that Leviathan summon. Uh, Scythe Marshal also here in the shops uh, contemplating, contemplating his market yep. and Exactly enough. <laughs> That's what like we call Dr. committing Cossack. to the bit. It looked like Dr. Cossack picked him up a sword robe, possibly for Radia to use for a little while. And Scythe Marshal is just a bunch of robes down in the Fey Marsh. So we know the Ashra spot is going to be Dark Imps. Uh, we're yes. not sure what's the Leviathan spot. Is that the uh, the Water Hag or the Gauntlet? I like Mike Recorder's description of that as 3D glasses in the Fave Arch. Nice. I haven't thought about 3D glasses in a long time. Uh. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, 
I, I do think it would be a, a it would be a bold play to try and take on the blue robe, especially if it's water hag. Uh, if it if it's all gauntlet, you just reset. Like you you can't handle that yeah. fight. Could you get enough swings in on water hag fast enough? I don't think so. I think I think you'd have to be really clever to uh, to swing that. So I totally understand just going away and. By the time you come back, you have enough information. You know which one is going to be, in all likelihood. Yeah, they definitely need to get a couple bosses under their belts before they really try to tackle either one of those. Mm -hmm. But it would be nice to know in some cases, I guess. If you catch that other blue robe in a really nasty spot, at least you know what you would be facing. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, we have sirens here in the dwarf castle for sale, so... Cossack grabbing a stack of those. That'll be a nice grind setup. See, a lightsaber, Gungnir spear. There, there's stuff available if you want it. Shops are definitely loaded tonight. Strength rings as well. Wow. Yeah. Certainly, you take a Zeus gauntlet over a strength ring any day, but there are characters oh, that yeah. can't use a Zeus gauntlet, and hey. You know where the strength rings are. Yeah, if you don't look up on the Zeus Gauntlets, at least you know where you could find something comparable. Tim's doing our last errand of uh, speaking to Yong. Get that set up. On our tracker pointing out, if you're bold enough to open chests here in Sylph Cave, where there are a bunch of uh, bunch of trap chests, in in Cossack's case, you can get a dragoon helm and a dragon whip. Uh, in Scythe Marshall's case, uh, you can find a power robe. Yeah. Oh, that looks like Doctor Cossack found one of those lovely monster chests. Yep. Oh, but that reset made him go back and grab the same robe. So, okay. <laughs> anyway, we're 10 minutes into the seed and we're raising the looter whale. This feels unnatural. It does. Uh, the few seeds I've played, it's usually like an hour and a half before I get to the well. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm still learning. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. We've seen so many races in, in this event where that's been exactly the case. It has. And I think, yeah, Dr. Kozak with that dragon whip. We are ten and a half minutes in. He's doing a grind. Gotta get that Leviathan online. They figures that Dragon Whip Radio might be able to do what he needs to to get a few levels in and be able to power through some of these early boss fights with that Leviathan, I guess. I mean, a level one character is not going to do the <laughs> 1600 damage necessary, no. I'm afraid to say. Fortunately, Thunder is a percentage-based attack. Unfortunately, punching isn't. So, no. bold strategy, but did not pay out. Oh, and we have a Cecil on the de on the uh, Lunar Dias. One of those two restricted characters showing up early. Thanks to that open seed. Yeah, so early is still Dark Knight, Cecil. May give Scythe Marshall a little bit of direction in uh, in actually going and fighting bosses, which is the core mechanic of this video game. <laughs> you would think we'd be doing that. 
No, we're, we're just going to go loot everything and pick everything up. We don't want to find anything. <laughs> I mean, we do describe this as a treasure hunt randomizer. So, you know, we're just hunting for treasure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just name every character Locke. Uh, I know we've seen a lot saber for sale, Grandfather. Yeah, we have seen the uh, the lightsaber. Uh, I mean, we picked up some crystal gear, but we sold that crystal gear. Yeah, uh, we very sold that. <laughs> uh, but honestly, like he's a dark knight right now. He's kind of dead weight until we go up ordeals yes. and. That is not what Scythe Marshall appears to be doing. Is uh is going and peeking the Huh. Oh, okay, yeah. Going and checking some of the chests here in Cape Bahamut. Probably gonna peek the boss. I hope doesn't try to fight the boss. Uh Dr. Cossack, meanwhile, is going for a much more fightable thing. Uh whatever's in Antlion Cave. And that's a doctor. Yeah, that that is a doctor, and that is an octopus pretending to be an antlion. Uh, so we do have to fight Dr. Luge at some point, but we, we got enough yeah. time. We can worry about that later. And Dr. Cossack pulling up the spoon out of the sand. Abad was here. He left this. <laughs> well, we got the early spoon. Now if we can just find the early adamant and the early Edward, might be able to do a little work here. Yeah, there you go. Be ready for anything. We're going to go check who's on Mount Hobbs now. Yeah, good chance we don't bother checking what the summon is at Hobbs, because, you know, we found Leviathan. What could be there that's interesting? Uh, this edge that's is more edge. interesting, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Honestly, not a bad place for Ogopogo. Uh, Rydia does just immediately go down, uh, thanks to having levels. Yeah, that is a third party member for Dr. Cossack. Did not go and grab DKC up on the moon. No. But uh, yeah, multiple ninja items. You're, you're not too worried about having a paladin right now. You got damage. Yeah, the edge will help push you through a few more fights to help make sure that Rudy gets to come online and way Leviathan can help out a bit. Yeah, honestly, Edge is a, a really good find here, not just because he's Edge, uh, but as one of the faster characters, these overworld early game spots, having a faster anchor is probably better than a slower one. Absolutely. So, yeah, slap him in the middle and uh, you got a good advantage in these fights.
Yeah, the, uh, the Sheila one check just gave us the Stardust item, which, I mean, you can use it here against the dolls, but, Good. eh. Last monster picking up a Thunderclaw from the bull. And just a protector. Ah, uh, yeah. So I mean, that's that's the flip side. You get so much access, so many important key items, so easily. Uh, your other key item checks are gonna start being whiffs. Yeah. You have to really start digging to find the ones you really need. I don't know that Dr. Cossack even went and saw that DKC was on the moon, uh, but is doing ordeals regardless. So when he does pick up Cecil, we'll have a paladin instead. Yeah, well, I think he's just helping to find uh, some key items to unlock some stuff that he can keep progressing through without having to go to the moon yet. Yeah, it's very reasonable. When you have this batch of, of objectives, you, you want to be sweeping through the moon all at once. Uh, and ideally, right. that would be the last thing. Odds are that you'll probably have to come back. Uh, but this is likely to be Scythe Marshall's play as well, and it'll have that bit of extra value for him. Well, well. You're supposed to be inside, Dark Knight. You're, 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 this is too early. You're supposed to be inside. A little bit of French vanilla for the DKC there. He, he decided he wants some fresh air today. I mean, that's fair. Still isn't hitting too hard, so the party will be able to survive the three waves mm, fairly easily. Yeah. And what are we rewarded with for this endeavor? A ribbon. Stylin'. Uh, we're rewarded with a paladin, really. Yes. Well, at least we, we will be for Dr. Cossack once he decides to make a trip to the moon. And I'm sure he'll be very happy to see that paladin. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's starting to be a uh, an overworld that gave you the magma key early out of necessity, which is making me worried about how loaded the moon might be and uh, how much challenge there may be in obtaining those goods.
Life Marshal about to be awarded is his ribbon, and then his paladin, which will be even better for him. And it looks like Dr. Cossack is going to go to the moon, so actually we'll get his reward as well. I uh, have to wonder how much how much he's going to explore up there. Uh, so you don't you don't want to be making this cutscene trip over and over. Uh, but it might be a little early to really commit to a moon play. Yeah, I'm thinking probably at best, probably say about the same thing that Scythe Marshall did up here. Grab the character, maybe peek bah Cave Bahamut, and then probably head back for most likely the Baron Inn or the Underground one. Yeah, I think my instinct right now would be to go towards Dwarf Castle, like including if I'm looking for characters, because uh, that, that's just going to be an easier spot to deal with. And we do have one duplicate, so for all we know, there's a Cecil there, too. Could be. But no, that, that was Cossack's entire jaunt. Go grab a character and leave. And now we're going to go see if we can't spike some gear for the Paladin. Yeah, that great bow. I mean, it back rows him, but it's not the most endearing option. Uh, nor is that mute knife. We know lightsabers are for sale, uh, but really you're hoping for something out of a box. You're hoping for something free. And yes. Evelyn Cast, where do you uh, to look for it? Now that Rudy has got a few levels, she might be able to use Leviathan to take out a few of these trap chests as well. Uh, just, okay, there. Yeah, just get a free one. Yeah. Why buy it when you can just go find one? Yeah, we have a, uh, a plethora of options for handling these trap chests, so long as characters stay standing. Uh, Rydia is going to have a little bit of a problem in that regard. Uh, Scythe Marshal picked up Sylph somewhere along the way. I don't know that Cossack did. Uh, but that does make Rydia your de facto healer for this uh -huh. party. And Dr. Cossack getting through that first trap chest to pick up a white shirt. I mean, you're not too upset about that. No, not upset, but definitely not what you were hoping for. Yeah. Now, what I was going to throw out while our runners are going through the castle, you know, if you do stumble upon a Rosa at a character check, who do you ditch from this party? I think my vote would be Kane. Uh, but I don't know, do you want the more reliable healing and lean towards a physical party, or do you just really let Rydia hit things? Yeah, it's a tough call. We haven't really seen a whole lot of Kane gear yet that I recall. So, having Leviathan on Riddy, I feel like I'd probably lean towards dropping Kane for a Rosa, if anything. Well, there's a Crystal Sword, so we're done here. We're happy. <laughs> we're thriving, we're in our lane, uh, however, however that thing goes. <laughs> So 
So of course, both of our runners got to be very happy that they have that and got to be feeling like, okay, I've made some smart plays. I have that crystal sword. It's not an advantage for either one since they no. both got it at pretty much the same time. Just an apple for the last chest. But you know, you're not going to be upset about this, Eblin Castle. Yeah. No, th those are definitely some pretty good rewards out of there. Was that a second white shirt? And a Stardust Rod on his way out. And that level of the we thought that we bought earlier, we didn't need to. Well, it helped us get here, so there's that at least. It did. We can we can get a refund on the king. <laughs> Who's waiting on us inside the Baron Inn? Have a sparkle. It's a live. Well, hello there. <laughs> Goodbye there. <laughs> Definitely a place you like finding that one. Quick, easy, out of the way. Yep, and the guards shifted over by one slot. Uh, still just as easy to handle, especially with, you know, any sort of mage masher or crystal sword. Crystal sword is a mage masher. It's an everything masher. Exactly. Now, do you take the Tella? Ooh, a Legend Sword, though. Yeah. Got half of an Excal. Not that we need it anymore. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dart. It's dartable. Uh, true, true. Yeah, Kazak gonna ditch Tella? I, I kind of agree with that play. I don't think that you need much in the way of utility magic with this party. No, they're pretty well... Riddy can cover a lot of that. And then you've got Cecil to just kind of Knock everything down. Yeah, as far as progression goes, it was the magma key from Bedward and leave the surface. Yes. Our Tracker Plumerian Knight pointing out, we have seen some of the rudest possibilities already. We've seen Wyvern, we've seen Ogopogo, we've seen Odin. Uh, those are some of the bosses that you really hate to find late game, uh, and we've already knocked them out. Yeah. It's, it's shaping up to actually have a fairly smooth end game at this rate. Clive Marshall finding his Octomam. Gonna pick up his spoon here shortly. Yeah, and just file that away as a dart at this point. Uh, Bygen is here. He exists. Good for him. Uh, we have a crystal sword. Sorry. Yeah, he's he's not long for this world.
So we have yet another sparkle to clear out at an, yet another low HP spot. And there's the bard. Hi, bard. Bye, bard. Hi, bard. And it's, and it's just paled him. It's fine. So the real question is if this dwarf castle will give us any sort of key item. They're supposed to exist. Gonna... Uh, it's all in the moon. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. Blue planet's haunted. <laughs> it <laughs> is. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice bow. For... It, is, it is a very good bow. Yeah. But honestly, with this party, that's the kind of bow that, that you, you take home and you like you hang it on the wall. It's like it's like a it's a decorative piece. It's a conversation starter. It's like wow, you have an Artemis bow. It's like yeah, yeah. let me tell you about how I got that and not a key item. <laughs> Let's see, we've got the moon still left and Keyless Tower and Fave Orange bosses, right? Yep, that's that's our yeah. option set right now. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Cossack might be selecting the moon out of that set, uh, but first he's going to shuffle around his party a little. I uh, wonder if he's going to pick up Tella for some uh, leak for the gold dragons. No? Uh, yes? Oh. Huh. And swapped out Kane for the spoon word. This is, this is fascinating. So this is very this is very much a a tech play, right now. Uh, not not going for the high damage, going for specific strats. That looks like he's gonna go burn Siren's underground, crack some eggs. Yeah, it's this could be positioning a D money. Uh, I don't, I don't know how much you would... Eh, you, you, okay, you have 20 sirens. You may not need to D, buddy. <laughs> no. Uh, D money is, is our kind of internal name for one grind possibility uh, in this game. And I believe it's the one used by the vanilla speedrun. Uh, there are enemies in the Giant of Babel. The D machine, the... Uh, the Clockwork Dragon. And there's a formation where there's a summoner, uh, a siren thing, that will just spawn those enemies over and over and over. They're worth a lot of XP, and with a little bit of technical knowledge, you can pretty much one-shot them. Uh, so a skilled player and a skilled party can just get tons and tons of XP. It's a little dangerous to do, but these are the kind of runners that can do it on the regular. Yeah, with the life glitch active, you can even shorten that grind time down by life glitching the dragon spawn. Yep, cast life on an enemy as it is dying. It gets revitalized with no vitality. So it's just not vitalized. Uh, but you get the XP for it. If you're really fast, you can do it twice on, on a single enemy. It's It's quite nice. Uh, Scythe Marshal is just straight up taking that bard over a Dragoon.
Looks like Dr. Cossack's gonna head up Keyless Tower now. While Scythe Marshall's gonna be rewarded with his bow. Now, the funny thing is, we have the spoon, so it doesn't matter, but one of the best characters to wield that Artemis bow would be Edward. Uh, he does not really suffer from the stat penalties that it incurs, uh, and he's a he's a pretty good archer. Yeah, I'm not sure if we've seen any really good arrows to pair with it yet, though. Uh, that is a fair point, yeah. So we get to see if Scythe Marshall is willing to make the same play that Dr. Cossack has made. Uh, has made one of the same party moves. But we'll see about uh, just general direction. Is this the grind time for him? Uh, it's, it's looking like the grind time for him. And it's some, fa some flavor of Mylon up here at the Lugay spot. And that crystal sword Cecil will make short work of that Mylon. Yep. Solid, solid quad nines. <laughs> the outcome was never in doubt. But another Zonk. Wow. And the even better part is that defense sword would be a really good weapon for the Dragoon we dismissed. <laughs> it would be. He would be happy with that for right now. I don't think we can describe this as having been a rude seed, but it certainly has been a comedy. It, it is definitely turning into a very slow seed to be so open. Yeah, and again, with it being so open, like, you have to imagine anytime you hit a Zonk that your opponent has made the right play, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I would not be surprised if by the hour mark, both of these runners are feeling behind in some capacity. Uh, and we might even start to see that in how they handle things. Yeah, I definitely would feel behind. All these great items that are not helping me make any progression, I would yeah. be feeling horrible. Yeah, and things like Keyless Tower, that is a time investment. It so. is. <laughs> oh, but Scythe Marshall hitting up the trap chests in the tower gets a Murasame. So upgrading that edge just a little bit more. <laughs> and finding a defense sword. You didn't even have to go all the way up. You could have left my lot alone. All the good items are just laying around everywhere. Don't even have to work yeah. for them. That, that's T wildish for you. Yeah. All right, so I guess that was a, a temporary party shuffle from uh, from Doc. Oh no, just wants Ridia's gear. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm baffled. Doctor Cossack is making plays that are just too brilliant for me.
and I don't remember Scythe Marshal. Oh, yeah. Did visit my people. Did see the hourglasses. So, Dr. Cossack picking up a stack of them. Those will certainly help with uh, any other trap chests that you decide to go after, uh, or some some grind oh. opportunity on the moon. Last Marshall picking up that heroin robe on his way down. Nice. That's all the more valuable for a battle Rydia, uh, or even a battle Rosa. Yeah. Could have a battle Porum, but uh, really, no one's no one's taking the child on. Uh, after this party, I think I, I think you let the kids stay at home. So we might have a little bit of divergence finally. It's like Scythe Marshall is going to head down to the Fay March while Dr. Kyle Sex working on taking out Mr. Dr. Dialogue over here. Yeah, so this uh, Dr. Kyle going after an objective uh, for sure. But Scythe Marshall, these, these, I don't want to say they're going to be easier. Uh, they could be. The Dark Imps. They don't have a boss bit. They're vulnerable to a lot of options. Uh, and, uh, oh, hey, take up the warrior's chest on your way. Uh, and again, that, at this point, if that is Water Hag and not the Alt Gauntlet, you can handle that. You may only have yeah. one person left standing at the end, for all we know, but you can handle it. Yeah, Water Hag will definitely hit harder there than what you see in most places, but... As long as you can get a few swings off pretty quick, you shouldn't have too much trouble. These warriors don't like bards. They just don't like bards. They should learn to not like summoners. <laughs> Just a strength ring from doing that. Dr. Cosling, meanwhile, through the first phase of the Luge fight, so on to Robo Luge, wherever we want to refer to him. The real fight, TM. <laughs> so, do we take on the blue robe or the red robe first? I honestly don't know. I think I would peek the blue robe. If it's Water Hag, well, try to knock that out. Uh, if it's the Alt Gauntlet, I probably would go and deal with the red robe. Yeah, I would agree with that. If it's Water Hag, go ahead and try. Otherwise, I'm probably resetting for the red robes as well. Yeah, but in, in that situation, I would not be doing quite the prep that Scythe Marshall is doing. Because uh, if it is Water Hag, it's pretty much you get hit, you're you're down. So, just make sure everyone's standing first. Don't worry about their HP. Yeah. But we'll see what uh, what his route ends up being. It's going blue first. And Doctor Cossack made it through Doctor Lugay. Oh, and it was Water Hag. Oh, not not quite as punchy as I was expecting. But that is our first objective through uh, Dr. Cossack clearing out Cave Bahamut, uh, getting the Adamant Rock. So as we're saying, that's a dart. That's that's a shop. Kokol has a yeah. shop.
And that's not a key item, but you don't hate to see it. Scythe Marshal grabbing the pass from the Water Hag, going straight over to the Dark Imps. Yeah, definitely don't hate to see that with knowing how much of the moon you're probably going to have to complete so early, the way everything's looking. Ooh, yeah, if we want to talk about punchy, they do be <laughs> punching. I don't, I don't know if this is the easiest Fae March I've ever seen, but it does kind of rank up there. I guess you'd have to have Eb Eblin Royalty in one of the spots. Meanwhile, looks like Dr. Pasek's heading down to the bottom of the lower foot terrain. Oh, Scythe Marshal finding the tower key, so there was a key item down here. Uh, and it's actually a very necessary key item, now that I am rereading yeah. the objectives. <laughs> yeah, it's a very required dark yep spot. which naturally just increases the odds of Dr. Kozak coming down to the Fey March, doing those two fights, and getting his own pass. Uh, oh, here's another fairly free fight. Yeah, after all the free fights we've seen so far early on, definitely don't hate seeing this up here. Dr. Kosak even getting some of those life glitches in on these soldiers. Meanwhile, Scythe Marshall is taking out the Karate Man inside the Super Cannon Room. Getting ready to not check off his first objective. Yep, this will also lead to another key item spot, so could get pushed down a completely different chain. Dr. Kozak really taking full advantage of this hourglass, really wants to get not just the XP from the officer kill, but the life glitch on the officer kill. And nabs it. So that is the bulk of the XP doubled. Very nicely done. Oh, oh and an X Cal. This is a defense sword and a moon veil from the ribbon room. <laughs> this game wow. is supposed to have key items. Black Eyes, did you know this game has key items? Because I don't think the game does. <laughs> Definitely has them hidden somewhere. Somebody turn on K-Trap and not tell us. I mean, Cave Trap is such a fun flag to use with this randomizer. It's a great way to go to Zeromus at level 60 or 70 uh, and just not have to think about that fight. I, I do enjoy not thinking.
Uh, but Dr. Cossack, very wise about the uh, the Ogopogo spot. Its physical damage is quite high. Its magical damage, also quite high. So, setting up those Star Veils to make sure the Ice 2 doesn't really brutalize his party. The Waves, those will always be a quarter of your HP, so whatever. Uh, but this will make this fight a lot more manageable. Absolutely. Meanwhile, looks like Scythe Marshall is heading down Cape Bahamut again. Going to go take on Dr. Luge. It may actually have a, a slightly faster time of it compared to Dr. Cossack. Uh, his first phase of Luge was a little sluggish. Yeah, he's also still got Rydia with Leviathan instead of a sleeping Teller to help push out the DPS there. Meanwhile, we pick up a pink tail from Ooh. the home altar. And that does get the altar objective out of the way. So that's objective number two for Dr. Cossack. We can't turn that pink tail into an adamant armor until we get a hook, which I'm told, rumor has it, exists in this video game. But I'm not too sure based on the key item distribution we've had. Anyway, here's D Mist. Uh, it, 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 it punch. It sure do punch. This, uh, this three on three off pattern. Dr. Kazak got to spend that moon veil uh, to make sure Cecil survives. Uh, but yeah, this is a good time. If Edge has image, use that. If you've got illusions, use those. Uh, just something to ease up the, the punches on the next go around. Well, apparently Edge being in the back row with whatever equipment he's got on, it's, it's providing enough defense. Really, Edward is the one that's in danger. He's always in danger. He's Edward. Yeah, without adamant armor, he just takes way too much damage pretty much anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, all Scythe Marshall fist up Cape Bahamut, now heading down to the Lunar Subterrain as well. See if he decides to go top down or bottom up as well. And it looks like bottom up. Yeah, I, th I think that's a reasonable play with where you are. Yeah. Uh, key item wise, you're probably going to clear the whole thing. Yeah, and especially him already having the pass, it definitely makes a lot more sense. Yeah, taking on a behemoth chest. Uh, Doubt that's intentional, because just kind of opened it. Uh, but yeah, 
try and take the fight. Uh, hope Cecil survives uh, and get a little bit more XP. Dr. Kosick, though, did grab the pan off of that Demis fight. You can also be hoping to spike uh, Adamant out of the moon from this. Dr. Kozak is apparently done with the moon. I, he did not do all the moon, did he? But uh, he apparently decided he's done with it. No, I don't, I don't recall him doing the Wyvern altar or the Peldim altar. Yeah. I mean, he did clear out the objectives that are up there. Uh, so if he's lucky, takes care of the whole Fey Marsh, finds that pass. The rest of this stuff is, uh, you know, a terrestrial chain. Uh, that was an adamant, by the way, that he got from doing that beh behemoth fight. So, you know, cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> good. Yeah, this might be Dr. Cossack gambling a little bit on a more faded moon, or a, a more haunted moon, rather. Uh, we'll see if Scythe Marshall makes the same gamble after going after for the objectives. Uh, or or sticks it out. Which this is three, ch well, two checks he gets to do back to back here with the Sylph Cave and the Sheila two check. So, and that's one key item that we need. That package. So actually, if Sheila has harp into a vanilla earth crystal, uh, that's that's everything, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that would open up every all the objectives to be done. Then it's just grind and go. Yeah, but you do have to go back to that fame arch, yeah. Ah, just the other tail. And until we find the hook, we won't know what it might be hiding. And at this point, that hook has to be on the moon, doesn't it? So we've we've yeah. checked the Fey March that cleaned out the tower, uh, as far as information goes. We've yep. done all the surface, yeah. So Gotta be Scythe at one of those last two altars. Yeah, Scythe Marshall needs to stick around, and I think Dr. Cossack is going to go back. Uh, continuing to fade the fame... Oh, no, hitting up the giant. Right, we have a giant to do. Uh, but still fading that fame arch. That is... It's necessary. You must be there. Scythe Marshall going down to face Leviathan, get objective number two lit up on his side. We'll have the slight lead on that front. Uh, Dr. Kosek working very straightforward on objective number four. We've had a lot of rude bosses, but there still could be something mean at this element spot. What sparkles have we seen? Plague? It's plague, isn't it? Plague, uh, D-Lunars. D-Lunars. And he spent his, uh, 
is Star Veils. So this feels like a fight where only one or two characters are going to survive, and really, probably just the one. Okay, at least the magic power isn't too bad. Uh, those viruses not doing quite too much. Uh, but the punches were hitting hard. Flame is flame. Yeah, so Dr. Dr. Cossack did have a moon veil, spent that on the moon, had some star veils, spent them on the moon. Meanwhile, Cyph Marshall picked up his pink tail, completed his objective number two. Let's see if he decides to finish out the moon. Oh, Dr. Cossack in a, in a spot that is a Zerked Cecil doing 10k a swing, but you gotta get all those swings in in time, and every virus cast means time is running out. This has to connect. It connected. Dr. Wow. Cossack is through the element slot. One character left standing. Very close fight. So somewhere along the way, Scythe Marshall managed to obtain Artemis Arrows. Uh, is now going double arty on Demist, who is a summon, not a dragon, it turns out. Unfortunate. One, one of the few uh, things that looks like a dragon, walks like a dragon, waves like a dragon. I don't know if dragons in general wave, but I imagine Demist does. Uh, but not a dragon. Uh, that is a leg, though. That's the best and the worst target for Glare. Probably wouldn't have cared so much if he got the Berserk off first. Yeah. That is very punchy. Surprisingly punchy. Again, CPU slot, one of many in the game where... The vanilla boss does no physical attacks. All it does is that 10% laser. Uh, and so in the implementation, it just has a really high attack stat because it didn't matter. It now matters, uh, unfortunately. Even with all of Cecil's defense, that glare Ooh. still knocks him down. That is Scythe Marshall getting the pan, getting pretty much parity with uh, with Dr. Cossack's moon checks, 
but is walking out rather than exiting. Makes me think he's going for a full clear. It looks that way. <clears throat> looks like we're heading over to the Crystal Sword Altar. Yep, and this is going to be a good asset for him. Uh, we've determined that there has got to be something at these two remaining spots. Oh, is this going to be another fight that Cecil just ekes out? Oh! 17 HP! Ooh. Is that 16 more than he needed? It, it was! Is. <laughs> wow. Dr. Cossack making some clutch plays. And all he gets is an objective completion and a Sid. Yeah, Xenogad in chat bringing up the really important point, though. With Cecil being the only one standing, all the XP went to him and didn't go to Eddie, didn't go to Edge, didn't go to the other party members who could use it right now. Uh, Karan, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, Dr. Cossack did pop a few sirens. Not all that many, though. Yeah, I want to say only like three. If yeah, that. that's what I was thinking. Two or three. Uh, but Scythe Marshall has cleared the evil wall that was at the Wyvern spot. And there's your hook. And that's a duplicate Cecil. Yeah, that's a dupe. That's that's a heck of a dupe. I mean, we do have an Excal waiting to be forged, so we have we have several Excals in in availability. <laughs> Honestly, for as much as I like the Bard, and as much as he's the best-kitted Bard you're going to see all day, uh, I, do I, I drop him for a second, Cecil. Oh, yeah. And it looks like Scythe Marshall is headed down to the uh, final altar here on the moon. There's our gauntlet. So I guess Scythe Marshall is going to get a lot of money. Are there are there King Ryu's in this? Dr. Cossack finally making the play, finally going down to Fabul, or Fabul, Fae March. Uh, so we'll get that tower key that clears out an objective. We'll get that pass that makes returning to the moon much less appealing, even though that's exactly what you have to do.
yeah, red giants explode. They like to they like to explode. Yeah, so uh, if you're if you're gonna cast a summon at a red giant, you best not miss. This gauntlet is being rude to Scythe Marshall here. Dr. Cossack doing the Toad strats that, that we wanted to see. You'll love to see him. It also means he's going to pick up his tower key before finding the pass. So I wonder if he'll take on that blue robe or not. That's that's a fair question. Uh, I have to imagine you 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 step back, you save, you find out what one that is. Uh, Dr. Kozak not gonna step back or save. It's gonna it's gonna go. Yeah. Uh, so we'll end up with that pass. Uh, but. It, I would say either way, you're not leaving Fame Arch without at least checking, and once you see what it is, you're taking it. And yeah, there are the King Ryus. That's that's money. These dragons could be exchanged for goods and services. Smells like Dr. Kozak is going to go for that super cannon objective, uh, chasing the key item that he's obtained. Then is going to have to face, I, I would say face the music. We still haven't found the twin harp. I uh, was going to have to face the moon, I guess. It's yeah. not, really, not really a saying to face the moon. Found out he's going to have to go back after yeah. he's not wanting to, absolutely. Oh, but there's the Baron Key. So the hook and the Baron Key are remaining up there uh, for Dr. Cossack to find. We got more chains to get to those key items that we need. That Earth Crystal and that Twin Heart. So while we have our runners kind of going over each other's territory, uh, I want to give a quick shout out again to Harumph for taking care of the free stream here tonight in Plumerian Night, who has been tracking and throwing some additional insights in in chat. Uh, and thanks to Black Ice for joining me in the comms booth this evening. Let's not forget Humph in here. 
doing a wonderful job helping me out on my first time around. I mean, if you hadn't said, I don't think a lot of our audience would have even <laughs> noticed. You're, you're doing a solid job. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, I, d I dare say Dr. Kossing and Scythe Marshall here are doing a solid job representing their group here in the Adamant Cup. Uh, Dr. Kossing in particular putting on some tight, difficult fights in that giant. Uh, so certainly if you're not following them for, for their races and their free enterprise content, recommend that as well. Let's see what Copal has for sale. Uh, we know we're going to get an Excal out of the Forge, but does have a shop. Shop's got power shirts. Are you telling me Edward has just been wearing nothing this entire time? It looks that way. He has I, food. That's I all he needed. Oh, bards. Uh, Scythe Marshall is, is, is applying the hook. So I, I, I expect he wants that Adam and Armor out of that pink tail in short order. And he'll be happy he waited now since he'll be able to turn both tails at once. Yeah, that rat tail could be part of that uh, that essential progression. I know we were talking early on or before the stream about Given the Tower of Zot requirement, given the Cave Magnus requirement, you know, being in that area, are we going to see the treasury? I don't think we're going to see the treasury. No, no, I don't late. think we will tonight. <laughs> just, just a wee bit late. We're 80 minutes into the seed. So the time has passed. But thank you for the Earth Crystal. Yeah. Dr. Cossack going to take on the Pale Dim Altar first. This was where the Baron Key was. Uh, he's going to run the risk of seeing that and deciding to chase that rather than stay on the moon. Uh, and at least partially, that's going to be the wrong play. But if he commits to finishing out the moon, clearing out the other check as well, then it's all good. NPCs. I have to imagine Scythe Marshall really wants something. Probably Bacchus wines. We haven't we haven't found those. I don't think they're gonna be in Troya, but desperate times. This is Scythe Marshall pulling Objective 3 
out of the way. Uh, I I mean, he hasn't actually fought any of the bosses, but you've got an adamant armor. Yeah, you do, you're not even bothering to save. Just make sure your party has health. Oh, yes, two adamant armors. That is correct. Yeah, yeah, they got the one out of Elven Castle as well, right? Uh, out of the behemoth on the moon. Oh, yes, the behemoth. Yeah. Hello, Golvez. Well, I mean, that that would be great for Dr. Cossack's party, uh, considering he only seems to have two members. At the, the rate he's been going. Oh, the Scythe Marshal actually getting a nice Venom in. Uh, so poisoning the party, and thanks to the whole status priority thing, that sure is a mechanic in this game. Uh, that having the party be poisoned means they won't be paralyzed. So the Shadow Dragon will still launch on one of them, but the ones left standing get the Star Veils up really fast. Or you could just not bother with a Star Veil and swing for 8,000 with a Crystal Sword. That's an option. Yeah, that works too. At least mm -hmm. in most cases. Dr. Cossack picking up his Baron Key now. Yep, through that gauntlet. Only, only two party members really getting XP anymore. <laughs> That's all you need. Uh, depending on the two party members, yes, that's that's valid. Uh, there's one of those possible party members. So we've got Fu and someone else up here in the Tower of Zot. Uh, Dr. Kozak exiting out. Oh, it's chasing the Baron Key. So for Cossack's sake, he has to hope that the Twin Harp is in Baron. Uh, but... He, oh, no! I, I don't know that there's either situation really helps him here. Uh, no, he if, still has to go back to the moon. Yeah, uh, but I don't think either situation like saves them time or pushes them away. So this is this is a, a bold play, uh, but not a bad one. It's no. just not going to work out for this seed. I, I think this goes back to what we were saying about the runners feeling behind after a lot of that early game. This is the kind of move you make if you're feeling behind. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're feeling behind. You haven't seen your opponent say they're done yet. So you're taking a risk mm -hmm. that you hope pays off. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. This may not be one of those times, though. So. And of course, the cruel irony is uh, if he had stayed on the moon, gone after that eel wall, uh, would have been in a pretty good position. But obviously, you can't know that. So you have, you have to go just by your instincts reading the seed and you know the races that you've done in the past. Yeah, it probably helps, though, that there's technically two possible key items coming from Baron, where there was only one left. That is a very good point. You're, you're playing numbers here. Mm-hmm.
Yeah, these fights are not going to be terribly difficult for this party uh, on either side. Yeah, the, uh, the the harp and or the Luka key have to be here. Uh, there's there's really nothing else that could be going on. I don't know if this is Cossack setting up a, uh, a life lock situation on Ostra or just trying to power overwhelming. But it's turning into a power overwhelming. Uh, <laughs> she has spun. And she yeah. is down. Yeah, that, that Mage Masher, that Crystal Sword. Yeah, big damage. And, and big it, value. Wow. But Scythe Marshal is right behind, going to obtain that probably first try. Uh, so we'll be the first one in go mode. Uh, and I suspect we'll have an easier time clearing out the bosses in the giant. Uh, or at least a less sketchy time. Uh, so we'll be able to make up that objective golf. Yeah, de definitely probably won't be quite as close to dead after each fight. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's Plague. Yeah, that was not going to be difficult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got the count off. It moved one dumber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's our Sand Ruby. Uh, I Did we check who was at the Sand Ruby? We're not going to, but I don't know that we did earlier. I, I don't I don't recall seeing it. Hmm. Well, we'll never know. Uh, but that means that this is going to be the Luka Key. I have to want does Cossack take that or go back to the moon to hunt down the hook. As we see Scythe Marshall walking his way back out of the Baron Sewers. Doesn't even care mm -hmm. about going up and dealing with Plague. Yeah, no, he knows he's, he's good to go. So, even though it's a fast fight, this does yeah. not want to.
you know, with this quick parish, we'll have music coming from Dr. Cossack's side, and then not shortly thereafter from Scythe Marshall's side. Uh, so I think it's time we, uh, we sat back and let yet another Edward play a tune. So I didn't know we had Smile and Spheres all the way in Tucson, but uh, that seems to be what we're facing here in Cave Magnus. And of course, we did get that Luca key, and Dr. Cossack is chasing it. So this is going to be yet another whammy. Yeah. But, yeah. At least this one, you get to find out what it is before you have to fight a boss. It's just the walk down that's going to kill you. Yeah, that's a lot of time to... Uh, to bleed. Scythe Marshal, though, using one of those sirens to bring up a fight in Cave Magnus to try to steal some Bacchus wine. This is a strat. Yeah, not wanting to take the chance or the time to check at Cave Ab Evelyn for their Bacchus wines for sale, so you're already coming here anyway. Just use that siren and make your own. Yeah, this is this is just the sort of you know deeper game knowledge and just knowing and remembering all of these possibilities. The sort of thing that. Higher, higher end runners, you know, are able to show off and able to pull, uh, and you get some really, really fast runs and really interesting runs as a result. And Doctor Cossack oh. finding another adamant armor. <laughs> He's gonna walk it out, or at least check with the bosses. Yeah, definitely not the key item he was hoping for, but it, you don't hate it. <laughs> you do hate the antlion, though. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> so now has full confirmation that the one spot left on the moon was the thing that you need. He's got to be kicking himself over it. 
uh, and just has to get through as quickly as he can. Uh, Scythe Marshall is going to be hot on his heels. Yeah, yeah, he's going to probably drop off, burn the village down, and then head straight to the giant. Even even though it's a second paladin, you're not bothering to uh, to go and obtain this Cecil. You're just take care of the objective. Bows you along. That quake didn't yeah. even touch him. <laughs> yeah, if you'd have found that package much earlier on, you might have picked up that second Cecil, but not this late. Mm -hmm. You're in go mode. You know it. You just good on. Yeah, it's, it's going to be the difference between an evil wall at Wyvern fight plus returning plus doing the Tower of Zot versus clearing the Giant of Babel. Uh, spelled out like that, I think Scythe Marshall has the advantage right now. I think I think that's uh, safe to say. Yeah, I would agree. I, I definitely feel like Scythe Marshall is a little bit ahead right now. But it has been a very close race for the most part all the way mm -hmm. through. Yeah, yeah, it's it started off so linear, uh, just in terms of here's your magma key, here's your darkness crystal. Like the the freebies, the obvious first moves just gave you everything, and it took a little bit for these two to diverge, but diverge they did. This might be another... Oh, no, no. Cecil falls. So Dr. Cossack almost doing another fight where Cecil is the last one left standing, but couldn't even hold up uh, on that particular one. You know, drop the battle speed, give it another go. We'll see what Scythe Marshall's strategy is against the D-Lunars. I think that double arty is going to try to be a factor. Yeah, you're pushing 7k, it's a factor.
Yeah, it's looking like Scythe Marshal having a much easier time handling the D-Lunars uh, compared to do, uh, Dr. Cossack's run. Uh, the Cossack is making use of cover a fair amount here. Uh, finally putting Cecil in the back row to take less damage. So even if it's just Cecil doing the damage and Edge, keep, Edge keeping him alive, that can get you through a fight. And there we go. So Dr. Cossack is on his final chain. Take this hook. Oh, right, there's all, all, all the hook redemption, too. Uh, trading that rat tail for the earth crystal, trading the pink tail for an adamant, uh, and then go climb the tower. Meanwhile, Scythe Marshall has a Rubicante to fight, and then he's good to go. Marshall getting some use out of that Ice Claw. Getting some use out of that Adam and Armor, I suppose. So Edward stays standing. Yeah, much faster giant overall for Scythe Marshall. Uh, so if that didn't, if, if he didn't already seem ahead, that definitely gave him a bit more of an edge. Yeah. Meanwhile, Dr. Cossack picking up his Earth Crystal and Adamant Armor and head on over to Tower of Zot next. Yep, just has to rush that tower as fast as you can. Uh, but Scythe Marshall is going to head over to Troya for a slightly different reason. Is this should give him the crystal? Looks like Dr. Cossack's going to go check out the Evelyn's shop before he heads up there, though. Yeah, I guess. Looking for those Bacchus wines. And there they are. Uh, but I suppose there is a conversation that we should be having regarding Scythe Marshall's side. Now that he has the crystal in hand, has parked a very large whale in the Troya parking lot. There's just not enough space. Uh, he makes it work anyway. Uh, Black Eyes, do you want to do you want to go through the ramble? This is your first time commentating. You should do the ramble. Sure, sure. So. You know, we, we randomize everything and the seed that we can, but Zeromus is just too big, too complicated. And let's face it, we don't want big bangs coming at us from the Antlon Cave. It just would be rude. So, while we can't randomize his location, thanks to our amazing artists around the Free Enterprise community, I believe we're over 550 randomized sprites for Zeromus now. Mm -hmm. So, as we're seeing the flags in chat as well, I guess we'll go ahead and ask the question that everybody's wanting to know. Whose butt are we going to kick tonight? And is it cute? Yes. Can we comprehend the true nature of Zeromus' butt?
Scythe Marshall was using that Artemis bow for a bit of agility manipulation, perhaps. Uh, or just had two bows. I think that's also possible. I believe he probably had three or four at that <laughs> point. <laughs> Definitely two confirmed those. He had equipped two of them already. Mm -hmm. With the girl and an erg, we get a pig. Oink. Very kingly pig. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't think... Yeah, I, I, I agree with the but unknown. Any Anything from Angry Birds is a bit... Uh, a, a bit too far from, you know, an actual creature anatomy to have any kind of knowledge. They're, they're, they're just orbs at the end of the day. Yeah, these these would count as some angry people uh, swinging seven thousand, three thousand on a on a bad day. Uh, really, really solid hits here, and the solidly nerfed first big bang. Up oh, and there is the shutter and the shake and the crumble. And that is GG for Scythe Marshall. Coming in with an official time of 152.07. And yeah, advancing to four and one in the group stage. Very solid showing here in the Ninja Shirt group. And we'll see if we can get a class marshal in for an interview here shortly. Meanwhile, Dr. Cossack is slogging through that Golbez fight. Yeah, just, just needed to get a hit in. All the rest was just preamble. Just needed the hit. I do believe I see a Scythe Marshal here in the booth, so Scythe, if you can hear us, GG. GG. So I want to start, obviously, with the beginning, where you get a Magma Key and then a Darkness Crystal. And where does your mind go? Oh no, seat's wide open. Uh-oh. Uh, I hope I get some good characters soon so I don't have to be thinking about it. Yeah, I, I, well, you did find that Cecil on the moon quite early and uh, and grabbed him quite early. So I have to imagine a lot of the seed was just hoping for better and better gear for him. Yeah, I was, I I forget. So I, I did, I did darkness before going to Hobbs, right? So I had, yeah, I had the Cecil and then I went to Hobbs and I said, oh, it's edge. Okay, Kane, Cecil, edge, and someone who might be Rydia, Sure, Rydia isn't the best healer, but I guess she's a healer, so that's perfect. All right. I, I wish I had Bacchus wine, but that's fine. Uh, and then I never found anything except, like, I found defense swords later, but I never really found anything for Kane. So I ditched him for Ed, and then I was like, okay, well, 
I'm just going to go until I get Fusoya, and then I found Fusoya. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask next, next about picking up Edward, which, Spoon. I mean, not, yeah, Spoon was, Spoon was it. And, and Kane okay. was not good. <laughs> yeah, if, I, if had you found those defense swords earlier, do you think you would have changed your mind, or were you you're thinking this is an Edward show, no Ooh. matter what? That's, that's hard to say. It's hard to say. I like Spoonward. Spoonward's fun. Um, and I had Sirens. I knew where Sirens were, so like, I popped three Sirens so I could get Edward levels when I got them. But I figured, like... So, so Kane doesn't have... So Kane's tier 7 is Dragoon Spear, which mm -hmm. is okay, right? It's a good weapon. It's weakness. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have tier 8, obviously. And... Tier six is only available in shops in the forge, or you find it in chests. And I didn't want I want I didn't want to keep looting. I was tired of looting, and like looting slows you down, and my inventory was a mess anyway. So um, I figured at that point, Edward was going to do more damage, sort of on average, and like he has a higher uh, damage output at the end of the game too. Like, in this Roma's fight, he's better than Kane. If you find Adamant, yeah. anyway. That's va that's valid, yeah. And, and I had the spoon, right? It wasn't mm -hmm. yeah. if I find the spoon, it was I had the spoon. So that, that factored in. Yeah, and I guess, from so from there, like, the main divergence that you had from Dr. Cossack was going and committing to the moon uh, a little bit later, but fully committing to it. Uh, Dr. Cossack kind of hit the objectives and then hoped for more uh, back on the blue planet. And there was just nothing on that blue planet. Blue planet was completely haunted. Well, not completely haunted because you had to come back to it at some point. But like, <laughs> I was like doing stuff on the blue planet, go to Fey March, get the tower key. Okay, great. But then, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing else. And I'm like, um, I'm on the moon with six key items. <laughs> All right. Uh, the the weird part was I was on the moon with six key items and I had no character checks left. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I said, oh, all right, Radia, <laughs> you got this, girl. You'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, we, we never saw Rosa. I'm pretty confident never. she's on the hook route. I, I think we said, uh, Dr. Kosick and I were, were chatting after the seed. So spoilers, you'll, you you see Dr. Kosick in the Zoromus fight right now. Uh, yeah, he, d he does finish the seed, it turns out. No, nah, it turns out. Uh, <laughs> it, it might not be surprising, given his levels. Um, but yeah, so... <laughs> we were chatting, and it was like, oh, yeah, I think pretty sure Rose is on the hook route. I think we checked everything else. I never checked the Kaipo character, though. So... Mm. I, I, yeah, I, sh I actually don't think either of you did. Uh, yeah, Dr. Kozak did get the same room, but it was so late. Yeah, uh, yeah that was, what, mm, Baron Castle? Yeah. 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 <laughs> the, the the backwards Baron Castle movement is not something <laughs> I do often. <laughs> and we were a little surprised when it did it. Uh, when it, it was a uh, plague on on the throne, so that would have been a pretty fast fight. Yeah, it would have been fast, but also the crumble and the cutscene and it's yeah, just yeah. like. Yeah. Mm. So I, I I remember people saying it's faster. It's sort of faster on average to to walk it out looking at the bosses i had left i didn't i knew it wasn't golbez i knew it wasn't like wyvern or something so like i could have i could have easily not done that but i i figured i would walk it out anyway yeah that's one one last thing in my inventory true yeah i i guess the baron key would go away for and, and okay whatever <laughs> <laughs> I, I I felt bad doing Keyless Tower though. That felt bad. <laughs> Didn't want to do it, but I did it anyway. Yeah, and we we didn't even get any value from that, did we? No, it was a defense no. sword. I chucked no. it at something. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got damage value out of it, I suppose. Uh, Black guys, anything you wanted to to ask Side Marshal? Anything else, Dad? Uh, no. No, a great run, great race. Thank you. It was uh, 
I don't know. <laughs> I, I took the alt gauntlet and I felt bad about taking the alt gauntlet. But I said, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm going to get my levels and it'll make the giant easier. And I'm only going to dump Rydia for Fusoya. So that's cool. But then, you know. <laughs> but then my party, I almost, I, I ran into some issues with the giants. Probably shouldn't mm. have cast Leviathan. But that's okay. It was, it was, <laughs> I got through it and it was fine. It's fine. It's an educational moment. Yeah, let's remember that one. I knew they countered, but I for, I thought it was like beam or emission and not explode. <laughs> anyway. Yes, GG again, and congrats on being four and one in your Ooh. group. Very I good standing. I think that guarantees me at least a play in, so that's kind of nice. But you know, hope to go four, five and one. But you know, you got to make it happen. So, anyways, uh, thanks again. Good, in, uh, fun interview. Um, Thanks to the Restream team, uh, Huffin and Black Ice on comms. And we had Plumeria Knight, uh, was Plumeria Knight tracking and, and Harumph on Restream. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Harumph, about required music. I tried to make the fight <laughs> fast, I guess. Anyways, take care, folks. Have a good one. Yeah, but we did just see Dr. Kosick finish up with a 159.53. We'll see if we can get him in for a bit of a chat. Yep, that looks like Dr. Cossack. So if you can hear us, GG. Yep, thank you. GG. So we got to start at the beginning where you come, you get the magma key and follow that into the darkness crystal. What's going through your head at that point? Uh, I wanted to get Rudy at some levels, start with the Leviathan, but there were no coffins. As you saw, I tried the egg and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. A bold play, and I'm glad you, you went for it, even if it didn't work. That, that would have been a nice early boost. Uh, but yeah, like, there, there wasn't really a divergence uh, between you and Scythe Marshall until... Yeah, until the end. I took too many trips well, back and forth to the moon. Well, if, even a little earlier before that, you, you were... I think you were the first one to go and, you know, investigate the moon, uh, going after the objectives, which, yeah. I mean, that got you towards key items because there was Jack on the earth. <laughs> uh, but just, you know, committing to the objective spots and then looping back. And I, I mean, you're clearly aware that uh, that chewed into your time. Yeah. And that giant, I don't know how I got through that. That honestly, like, a, a bit of a golf clap on just managing to get through that. Because uh, that was impressively tight, but you pulled it off. Uh, and I guess the other question would just be on the uh, the party composition that you went for, going for Edward and and using Tell as an anchor. I mean, I understand Tell as an anchor, uh, but just kind of leaning on that spoon word. Yeah, I haven't, in my practice or in my other races, I never got to use spoon words. So I'm like, I'll go with it tonight. Yeah, makes makes sense. You both wound up going with uh, spoon words. So I was, as, as, a, as a Bard fan, I'm, I'm happy to see that. Yeah, I wish there was a healer earlier. I would have uh, ditched someone, maybe the Edward. <laughs> Yeah, they're all behind Zot and the Hulk. Thank yeah, you. apparently. <laughs> Rosa is rumored to exist in this video game. We didn't see her. Yeah, the only character check I didn't make was the Hulk, so she had to be there. It was a dupe Cecil at package, I think? Yep. Yep. Yeah, this, this was a classic case of just routing decisions not playing out in your favor, because that, that giant show, like, you had... Even if it was a bit tight, you had the uh, the battles like handled uh, in, in virtually every case. But taking those the uh, the thinner moon route just wasn't the right play in this seed, which is unfortunate. Yeah, up until the moon split, there it was a very very tight race. I'll have to watch this back. Uh, 
uh, yeah, but any uh, any last thoughts before we wrap it up for the evening? Nope. Well, GG again. Uh, great run. Thank you. Looking forward to next week's matches. Yeah, same here. Uh, and looking forward to more free enterprise tomorrow, uh, which for me to complete the sentence would require pulling up the list of matches. So there we go. Uh, that's what that's what we call a transition. Uh, <laughs> We do have uh, tomorrow on fr the Free Enterprise channel. Uh, oh, this, oh, this is not up yet. But I'm looking at today. <laughs> oh, are they? Okay, I was looking at today, though. <laughs> it's late. Oh, okay. Uh, whatever, we'll figure it out. Uh <laughs> I, I got you. At 7 p.m. Eastern, we've got Cubs okay. Rule versus uh, Soapbox Gamer on Free Enterprise. At 9 p.m. Eastern, we've got Gurren versus Freebird Lover on Free Enterprise 2. And wrapping up the night, it looks like we're going to have Silverfire versus Rex Rawl at 10 p.m. Eastern back on the Free Enterprise main channel. Yep, we uh, we may have may shuffle some of those around uh, depending on, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, but if you're not following the Free Enterprise channel in this one uh, and RPG Limit Break for that matter, uh, oh. you know, keep keep an eye on those. Uh, you'll see when we go live. Uh, there, tournaments are so much logistics, y'all, uh, and we cannot thank our restreamers and our admin team enough uh, for managing to pull all this through. Uh, and being able to read what day it is, uh, which is apparently a skill I do not have. <laughs> That's okay. Was, apparently, I, I'm a little wrong because we're still making some adjustments. So yeah, I, I was sitting here about to rattle off about Starman <laughs> and Flurry Fourteen. That was earlier today. <laughs> huh, but y'all, if if you're as tired as we are, maybe get some rest. Uh, and if you're not, uh, we're gonna send you all over to. Let me double check. Yeah, we're going to send you all over to Ultra's Professional, uh, who is doing a bit of practice on this lovely tournament. Yes, with that, uh, just thank you all for watching. Thank you again, Harumph, uh, for the restream of Plumeria, Plumeria Night uh, for taking care of the tracking. Uh, thank you to Dr. Cossack and Scythe Marshall for being on, this, on the program. Being willing to be restreamed. And Black Ice, thank you for joining me in the booth. Yes, and thank you, Hubford, for the support on commentary here. Yep, and thank you all for watching. And as we head over, everybody remember, no spoilers. Yeah, no spoilers. None. <laughs>